is. It is, man. Thanks to my mom for sending that. My mom will find the coffee that we don't have on Guam. Mm-hmm. And she always looks for any any brand of coffee that has like a skull or crossbones on it. or <laughs> What am I drinking? <laughs> yeah, or, you know, sometimes it'll be like a dude with eyes like about that big. What is that? Is that you? Sorry. Yeah, that's you, Bree. <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> okay, let's just get right to the phones. Uh, we have a uh, Department of Labor uh, Director David De La Sola. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Chris. How are you doing today? Uh, we're doing pretty good. So big news uh, involving uh, you over the weekend as the governor's uh, inked a deal now with the uh, U.S. Department of Labor. Yes, yes. We've been waiting for uh, something to come out. This is mm-hmm. a brand new program mm-hmm. developed just for the pandemic. Okay, well, if you could just uh, break it down for us. Okay, uh, well, um, as you know that we, uh, the governor, applied for disaster declaration with the president, and we were moving down parallel paths of going after the DUA, which is Disaster Unemployment Assistance, while Congress passed this new Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program, uh, and we were waiting to see which one we were going to get first or which one uh, D.C. was going to decide was going to implement. And uh, we got notice that the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program was the one that's going to come into play, most likely, and they won't do the DUA. So, but that's not 100% sure. Everything in Washington is being developed, and this is all new. They're trying to tailor programs specifically for this pandemic. Right. So the good thing is that this is a longer program than the DUA, which is typically a 26-week program. This is a 39-week program, and uh, it will pay weekly unemployment assistance. the amount is something that we have yet to receive from USDOL. So the exact amount of how much is still being looked at and it hasn't been given to us. This is not something that we have any influence over. And it will be a set amount for everyone. What, what is that set amount? We're waiting for that number oh, to come from okay. USDOL. We don't have, uh, we don't have any say or, or or you know more or less or how much it is it is given to us just like this program mm-hmm. and uh, the one thing that they keep uh, not apologizing for but asking for us to hang in there because they are working out the guidance and the details of this program since it, since it was it is brand new right. that it's not even, it was just passed a week ago or less and uh, they're literally writing it on the fly. Mm-hmm. The first thing that we needed to get in order to uh, qualify is an agreement with the, the governor or the, uh, the island of Guam and the U.S. Department of Labor. And that was what uh, I, I received or, or the governor received early this morning, yesterday. And uh, uh, we went through it and, that, and, that, and she basically signed it in the afternoon. That's how quickly we want to turn this program around and get it up and going. Um, I went since that morning. Uh, I've been up and working with uh, trying to do DC time and asking uh, all kinds of questions that I, I'm sure you and the island wants to know. And they basically came back to me that uh, they understand the uh, the questions that i'm getting and they uh they basically are asking for uh you know that the regional office is working and will be in touch with us to provide us the technical assistance and um you know the quote is that they are aware that we may be challenging for it may be challenging for the, the department or the territory without an unemployment insurance program to right. implement so this program is going to, you know, have a lot of questions, and they are working feverishly to provide the guidance, and we'll be working with the regional office 
to help us provide that guidance as they stand it up. Right. I know. So, so Dave, that was what people were saying over the last couple of weeks was that there was that, that sense, a sense of anxiety and that are we even going to qualify because we don't have an unemployment program. So it's uh, I, I guess it's good news that you guys are able to work past that. Yeah. So, you know, since we don't, they basically had to pass legislation for specifically and not only for Guam, but also for those people that don't qualify for UI. And that's like the self-insured people, the small businesses mm -hmm. that uh, had to close up and they don't have an income. Those people typically wouldn't be paying into the to the unemployment insurance plan and they would not be covered. So now with this plan, states are have a, a, a separate uh, type of program and this plan is, you know, is perfect for us to use as a mechanism in order to get the relief for our our people who have been uh, displaced. Do you have a rough estimate of how many people have been displaced as a result of the coronavirus crisis? I know that we spoke with Mary Rhodes from GHRA last week, and as she was telling us that up to 3,000 in the tourism industry alone have either been uh, uh, furloughed or um, had their hours reduced or laid off. Um, w what I can give you is, uh, uh, and uh, as you know, this weekend uh, the governor passed an executive order requiring all employers to report their changes of status to me. And uh, uh, the, today I'll be meeting with Gary Hiles, mm -hmm. my chief economist, and we're putting together a formal uh, mechanism that will hopefully be an automated type of uh, uh, form for them to fill out so that we can track it uh, e easier. But in the interim, uh, we uh, have the rapid response at uh, dol.guam.gov, mm -hmm. which uh, mostly a, a lot of the people that have been laid off or furloughed or reduced hours have been uh, sending in and some employers have been sending in and uh, I have a team of people that are uh, combing through that emails and trying to tabulate it and since it's been up for about a week we have uh, nearly a thousand um, emails and uh, roughly we have about 2400 um, displaced workers and about 13, 1400 reduced hours of people reporting into that site. But that doesn't really include too much of the Hotel and Restaurant Association. Right, so the number is way larger than we thought it was. It's, it, and, and the thing that I noticed uh, the most was that every couple of days that number almost doubled. <laughs> so uh, it is growing exponentially as we speak uh, as as we keep moving uh, further along this uh, epidemic. Right. And I actually got this uh, message from uh, Mary Rhodes um, that um, you're right, the executive order uh, is currently in effect and DOL is planning to automate this process to collect the information. Um, she put the rapid response at dol.guam.gov and for individual employees, they also can send in their information, yeah. correct? So uh, we'll have a little bit of check and balance because uh, once I stand up the, uh, the more formal site, that's for employers to give us the aggregate uh, information of their employees. And uh, I can use that to help me uh, ask for uh, uh, advance amounts for this program. Because the uh, Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program Although they haven't told us exactly, it, it is stated that uh, the monies will either be advanced or reimbursed. Mm. But the mechanism and how it's going to be done and is that that hasn't been spelled out yet, and we have no idea right. how uh, quickly or how much work it will be to get in advance. But uh, with past experiences, they will get us the money one way or another, whether it's advanced or reimbursed. Right. I, uh, I, I guess, Dave, my question would be, do we have this type of money laying around uh, yeah. for us to use and then be reimbursed at, at a later date? Well, uh, that's, a, that's what I'm going to work also this afternoon is to come up because uh, it is 100% uh, 
uh, federally funded to also cover as admin costs. Mm -hmm. So to stand this whole thing up. So we are basically going to sit down and then, you know, and sit with the uh, Adeloupe loop and come up with an initial number to, to forward to them mm -hmm. and ask for ahead of time. And uh, that's how we've done way back when I was a uh, director in the 90s. We basically came up with an estimate and, you know, and submitted it to them. And then they would give us a, a dollar amount to kick off the program. And then as we start drawing down on that dollar amount, we ask for another uh, uh, advance payment. So that's what I'm hoping will happen. But as I, I hate to keep saying, the, this program is being developed as we speak, and the guidance is we're being worked on, and uh, it's a whole new program, and we will know, and you will know as I know. Mm -hmm. Right. Did you get any indication though, like uh, like a, a timeline or anything? They're working as quickly as possible. Okay. Right. Uh, I, I, they the first thing that needed to be done was this agreement, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they basically said, as soon as you sign and send it up to us, we will start, you know, in parallel working on how the guidelines. The, the hardest part is for us is I'm trying to get the, from them the application process and the forms so that we can see how much we can try to automate because the, the difficult part of this program would be to, when you're in quarantine, to keep the people safe from spreading the disease as they apply for the assistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's... You can kind of see the challenge that we have. Big challenge. And that's why they understand yeah. the challenge because it's not just us. It's right. every state in the nation sure. has the same problem. It, it, for but people, most though... of them have UI, and that is all automated. So they are mm. uh, ahead of us when it comes to that. Uh, and UI is a massive undertaking. And and in a lot of divisions in DOL and the state levels, the uh, unemployment insurance division is the largest division in in their state for DOL. So it is a huge and uh, and a large undertaking and a very complicated uh, uh, program to implement. Mm -hmm. But you know we are working as quickly as we can to help get this program up and going and to get the people the money as safely not only for the people but for our employees that are going to be administering this program so that we don't we get the money out without you know spreading the virus mm -hmm. right there there may be some people uh, that don't have uh, access to uh, the internet and aren't able yeah. to email yeah. uh, the rapid response at dol.guam.gov are you guys planning on standing up as some sort of a, a phone line? We are, and uh, as we speak, uh, the the Joint Information Center, uh, Janella, is is uh, going to be. And that's for her to talk about a three one one number, which will be a, uh, a like a hotline, and in there you have will have a menu of options to hit depending on what your questions are. And I have a team of people that will be standing by to take on the labor type questions. Okay. And how soon, I'm sorry, you, you guys looking to, to stand that up? That should be standing up today sometime. Nice. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, talk to Crystal. Mm -hmm. uh, and she will give you more information as they are working out the technical side of standing up a, uh, a system like that. But right. uh, we look forward to it. And I apologize to the island because I know a lot of businesses and people, I, I, that's all day long, I, I've been answering questions and trying to help them out. And uh, in this quarantine process, it's difficult to answer all the phones and all the emails of everybody because uh, not all my staff have also have internet and computers at home and we are doing the best that we can and uh, and that's why I will just try the best that I can to get the information out to the media so that you guys can share it I think that's the best way initially as we start uh, ramping up and getting the information and uh, this system that's in place will transfer to us and uh, my staff 
at home can start assisting the people and collecting the information so that they can get the answers. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dave. I, I know you're really busy, so we appreciate your time. And I guess we'll be checking in with you, you know, a little later in the week. Um, or in the we, we added your number to our favorites list. Dave, so. <laughs> I mean, because well, there are thousands of people, in. so, you know, <laughs> wanting right, to yeah. know how can they get these unemployment uh, I don't benefits. I want to be on the naughty list. <laughs> <laughs> now you're getting money, so you're in our favorites now. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is going to be a challenge, and I just hope and pray that everybody stays patient and stays safe. And uh, I do want to let you know that the governor and this administration is working as hard and as quickly as possible to get this up and running and get the assistance to the people because I have family that are hurting and friends and everybody this affects everybody so i i've never felt more uh, you know that i have to work as hard as possible to make sure that we get this going and please be understanding that this is new it is being written as we speak this pandemic uh, unemployment assistance program it is it, it, it as i get the information or if i get something to that needs to get out i will be out there and informing you through these uh to this process like what i'm doing now to keep the island informed so uh please be patient and uh we will work as hard as possible okay thank you uh dave again dave de Sola from uh the guam department of uh, labor you mm -hmm. got that uh email that they can send the stuff to right the email is rapid response at dol dot guam dot gov R A P I D response R E S P O N S E at D O L dot Guam dot gov, excuse me. Uh, for individual employees, when you send in your email, uh, you need to put the name of the employer that issued the furlough or layoff. As for business owners or managers, uh, put the employer name and location, number of employees laid off or anticipated to be laid off, anticipated date. And length of layoffs, for example, one to two weeks, three to four weeks, or unknown at this time. Uh, number of employees with reduced work hours or anticipated number of employees with reduced work hours. When hours were reduced or anticipated date to implement reduced hours. Specifics on reduced work week imposed, for example, 32 hours per week, 20 hours per week, 10 hours per week, or unknown. And the duration of reduced hours. Again, the email is rapid response at dol dot guam dot gov and also as you heard from mr de la sola they are looking to stand up a uh, hotline number i think he said 311 right um, they're hoping to have that up today uh, for people to actually call 